Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today I have a tabletop review and comparison for you. We will be taking a look at the new Springfield Hellcat in the SIG P365. I know that there is a million of videos just like this that currently do or will exist on YouTube, but I thought I would throw in my own uh, submission there for you guys. Anyway, we're gonna go through the details of both. So if you were considering on your next micro compact nine millimeter, you might have a better idea of which one of these two will fit your needs. If that all sounds interesting to you, please stick around, that's coming up now. Okay, let's start this off with an unboxing. First, the SIG P365 comes in a SIG hard case. Now inside here is going to be the handgun. Drop out that chamber flag and we are clear. Now, inserted does come one 10 round magazine with pinky extension. You also get another 10 round magazine with a flush mounted floor plate. Warranty instruction information is as well, and that is what you get. Okay, getting into the Hellcat, it does come in a cardboard box. Now inside there is a zippable nylon pouch, which we open up and get the firearm. Now inserted is a 13 round magazine, and included also is an 11 round magazine. Now with that, you get your warranty and instruction information, and there is gun safety lock, of course, a floor plate, which you can replace at 11 round magazine, peaky extended floor plate to this, giving it an overall smaller package. So that is what you get with the Hellcat. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the specs, starting off here with the Hellcat. It does have a length of five and three quarter inches, and over here on the 365, you are at a length of five and a half. So just a quarter of an inch shorter and overall length on the 365. Now the Hellcat does have a height of four and a half inches with the pinky extended mag inserted, just like the one you see here. If you put that base plate on there, you will be at four inches, saving yourself about half an inch in height. Now the 365 is exactly the same with the inserted uh, pinky extended magazine. You are at four and a half inches with the uh, flat base plate inserted, you are at four. The barrel length on both is three inches, so dimensionally in size, they are the same, except the length, of course, on the 365 is about a quarter of an inch shorter. So if you have a 365 and you're thinking about a Hellcat, you can pull that firearm out and see that dimensionally they are going to be about the same. If you have neither, here's my little dollar bill example. You can pull that dollar bill out. You can see from the back of the beaver tail to the front of the slide is about the length of a dollar bill. Dollar bill stops at about the bottom of the trigger guard there. If we look at the 365, of course, from the back of the dovetail to the front, you do have about a quarter of an inch there of the dollar bill left. Height wise down to the trigger guard is about the same. So uh, using that as a size reference for you guys. Now let's bring it in for a weight comparison. Of course, these are unloaded. So the Hellcat unloaded weight is one pound, 2.2 ounces, the 365 unloaded weight, one pound, 2.7 ounces. So just a little bit heavier, but that's not going to be enough to really notice a big difference. Okay, let's go over the magazine options real fast. So the 365, like I said, comes with two 10 round mags, one with a flush and one with an extended floor plate, which of course both fit in there just fine. Now on the market exists a 12 round magazine with a, and of course I know you're getting glare there, with a floor plate that does mesh up to the bottom. It's going to increase your length by a little bit, but will give you 12 rounds. Also, if you want it on the market, there is a 15 round magazine with extended floor plate. Now you do get two floor plates in here because the XL, if you have an XL, the grip frame is a little bit different in size. If you want more of a description of that, I have a couple of videos uh, that do explain the differences there. But those are there on the market and they are about $45 a piece. Now the Hellcat comes with the two magazines. It does have the 11, mag or 11 round magazine with the floor plate, so you can switch that out. Also, it does come with a 13 round magazine. So you are between that 12 and that 15 that the 365 offers. So really holistically, capacity offerings are very similar. Of course, you can get that one, or I'm sorry, two extra rounds in there at a 15 round mag if you want that. But you're gonna give up with that on the overall size of the mag. Now magazines from SIG are about 40 to $45. Uh, the Hellcat magazines from Springfield are $40, so price-wise, very similar. You might pay about $5 more per mag for that SIG P365 magazine. So let's take a look at the slides. This is the SIG P365. It does have a machined stainless slide with a nitron finish. There's your external extractor there. Now there are rear and front slide serrations if you want to do any type of press checking there. Now up at the top, there is a loaded chamber indicator, and here are your sights. They are in a three-dot configuration, and they are dovetailed into the top of the slide. These are the SIG X-Ray 3 day night sights. 
that are a rear and front uh, night sight with tritium insert in the front and that uh, circular sort of luminescent ring around the front. So good for day and for nighttime shooting. Now over on this side, just like the other side, there's front and back side serrations and your P365 roll markings there. Now the Springfield Hellcat is a machine billet slide with a melanite treatment on it. Now there are again back and front side serrations if you want to do any type of press checking. Now up at the top, the rear side serrations do also go up to the top of the slide. Personally, I'm not too sure of the advantage of that. Uh, they say it gives you extra gripping space, but if I try and grip here and here, <laughs> for example, I don't know how that's usable, uh, but I guess it is there if I am missing something. Okay, there is a loaded chamber indicator at the top. Now the sights are also metal in construction and in a U-dot configuration, similar to sort of like a Glock. I know that's probably making a lot of you guys cringe, but I actually like this type of sight setup. Now the front also has a tritium insert, uh, with that little uh, luminescent ring around it. The back are not night sights illuminated or anything like that. Again, like I said, they are metal in construction. Now they are dovetailed so you can uh, sort of drift them for any type of windage uh, adjustments you want to make. Cannot do anything on the elevation, just like on the Th SIG 365. The back is a, what they call their sort of like tactical racking uh, sight, so they are edged so you can rest those on anything and rack the gun without having to use your other hand. The other side looks just the same with back and front side serrations and the Hellcat roll mark in there as well. Okay, let's take a look at the trigger pull weight starting here with the Hellcat. 5 pounds, 7 ounces. And the 365. 5 pounds, 14 ounces. So again, they are very similar with one another. Okay, let's show you the triggers now. This is the 365. It is metal in construction. It has a gradual curve to it. If we go ahead and start pulling through, there is a little bit of take up right there. Then you hit that wall. Pulling through, a little bit of creep. There's the break right there. Reset, go ahead and start releasing. Right there, releases at about the 90 degree point. Go ahead and start pulling through again. A little bit of creep right there. A little bit more into a break. Again, nice quick reset. Fine for a concealed carry handgun. Uh, nothing to write, write home about on the trigger, but again, very functional and exactly what I would expect. Right there, reset. Okay, let's look at the Hellcat. Now, the trigger here is polymer, not metal, like on the SIG 365, and you're gonna notice right away there is a little trigger safety there. Just an added feature uh, benefit there for safety if you want it. Go ahead and apply a little bit of pressure. There is your take up. A little bit more, in my opinion, than on, than on the 365. Now, when we get to that wall, start pulling through. Creep right there, a little bit more. Right there into the brake, show the reset. Travel, travel, travel. Right there at about the 90, pull through again. A little bit of creep and do a break. Reset. Right there. So I would say probably, gosh, it's really hard to say which one I like more. These are both, I mean, they're very similar. Probably a little bit more creep here on the Hellcat than on the 65, but not by a, by a lot. Reset is about the same amount of travel, right there to about the 90. Uh, it's a toss-up for me on this, uh, very similar triggers. If you do like that added safety benefit, you do have that. If you like a metal trigger, that's better on the 365. I will say the surface area on this is flatter, so if you like that sort of flatter, if you're used to like apex triggers, that's going to feel better to you. If you like more of a curved trigger, it's gonna be the 365. So it's really a matter of your preference at this point. I can't say which one I like more. Okay, let's look at the disassembly of both of these, starting with the 365. Remove the mag and check that we are clear, and we are. I'm gonna lock the handgun open and throw the takedown lever down into the six o'clock position. Release the slide. You do not need to pull the trigger right off the frame. There is a double or a captive recoil spring barrel, and that is field stripped. Okay, taking a look at the Hellcat. Again, remove the mag and check we are clear, and we are. So I'm gonna also start in the open position and throw the takedown lever up into the 12 o'clock position. Release the slide, and it will need to be, the striker will have to be dropped, so you have to pull the trigger there. Now inside is a double guide rod and spring, just like on the 365. Drop out the barrel there, and that is field strip. 
Okay, bringing in the frames for comparison, this is the 365 frame. Of course, it is polymer in construction. Now, the magazine release here is reversible, so if you are a left-handed shooter, you can reverse that over for your use. The grip texturing here, I liken to a soft grit type sandpaper. Very comfortable for me. I personally do not like overly aggressive grips, and you don't get that here, but it is tacky enough to really hold on to you. Uh, you do not have any type of interchangeable back straps or anything like that, which is to be expected of a subcompact or a micro compact carry. There are little finger grooves there, so keep that in mind if some people do not like finger grooves because not everybody's hands are built the same, but for me that is actually very comfortable and you have a little relief cut in the bottom of the trigger guard. The trigger guard to me is a good size if you are doing winter carry with gloves. Small gloves will fit, big heavy winter gloves probably won't, but that's going to be the case with most guns anyway. Now on this particular model there is an external safety. You can get the 365 without that safety. Uh, this is just what I have here for comparison and the controls on the safety are ambidextrous, but the slide stop and the takedown lever are not. Now internally here, one thing I do like about the 365 is the guide rails are uninterrupted and do travel most of the distance of the frame. So just a little bit more positive guide and reinforcement there. You do have a rail space here if you want to run a light or a laser. Uh, all of your internal components, guide rails, uh, uh, trigger bar, all that sort of stuff is metal where it needs to be so nice and reinforced. So uh, that is basically it on the frame here of the 365. Now the Hellcat is also polymer in construction. The grip texturing is very similar uh, to the 365. There are finger grooves here and a little bit of a cutout here on the bottom of the trigger guard. Actually, I feel like the grip on the 365 to me is a little bit more comfortable, a little bit less space in here. I would like a little bit more clearance, but that's just me. Everyone's different. Um, you do have sort of dips into the side of the frame here to sort of mesh in with your off, uh, with your uh, with your dominant hand thumb that kind of rests there nicely for you. Now this does not have any type of manual safety, but you do have the trigger safety there on the trigger if you need it. Uh, size of the trigger guard again is about the same as the 365 in my opinion, so is doable for a lighter type of glove. Big heavy winter gloves not going to work out for you. You do have rail space up here at the front, although the rail space is not as long, so you, you just keep that in mind there. Now the magazine release of course is set up out of the box for a right-handed shooter, but it is reversible if you are a left-handed shooter, so no problem. Your controls for slide stop and takedown lever are only on the left-hand side of the frame. Uh, they are not ambidextrous. Now all of your internal components, your ejector, your trigger bar, uh, your guide rails are metal where they need to be, but keep in mind again you don't have that sort of fluid uh, <laughs> slide fluid. You don't have that fluid sort of guide rails on there uh, like you do on the 365. But again, that's very normal on a lot of handgun designs, not a big issue. And real quickly on the barrels here, both barrels are three inches in length. Now the Hellcat barrel is a cold hammer forged barrel with a one in 10 twist and is melanite treated. And there is polishing there on the feed ramp. The SIG barrel is also, like I said, three inches. It is stainless steel with a nitron finish. There is no polishing on the feed ramp, that's okay. And it is a one in 10 twist. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about some quick takeaways from this. So, starting off, price point is always a good place to start. The 365, which has been available on the market for about a year to a year and a half, has settled down to about the 500 to the 550 price point. It was a little bit higher upon its original release, between about 550 to 6, but again, has normalized down to about 5. That's where we sell them for in our store. The Hellcat out of the gate is going to be, again, right now, between usually about five, uh, 5 to 6, probably equalizing around 550, uh, but I do anticipate that they will probably be down to about 5 as well, just looking at wholesale pricing and that sort of thing. So, for all intents and purposes, the Hellcat is going to be about the same price as the SIG when the dust settles, in my opinion. Uh, say, it, say it does stay at about $50 higher, again, that's not a huge price point difference, so relatively they are very similar in terms of what you are going to spend on them. Magazines, like I said, again, are relatively very similar. On a SIG P365, you might spend a little bit more on a mag, but really five bucks here, five bucks there isn't a huge difference. That being said, in terms of price, if you are going to spend your $500, which way should you go? Well, that is going to be very deter uh, kind of dependent on the features that you've seen in this video and what sort of things you like. If you look at it, really, it's it's almost like the Hellcat is a carbon copy of the 365 uh, with spring fuel sort of stylizing and spin on it. Uh, we looked at the weight, we looked at the trigger, we looked at the size dimensions, even the price point. Everything is so close. Um, stylistically, they're very different, uh, but you know, in size and weight and balance and, and that sort of thing, price point, they are very close. Again, out of the box, you are at a 13 and one on the Hellcat, whereas on the standard model three, uh, 365 by SIG, you are at 10 and one, but of course the XL is a 12 and one, and you can even get those 15 round max. So 
Uh, who's to say that that uh, the Hellcat will not also have available to us in the 15 round uh, mag offering as well? Probably will. Now picking them up, their sort of their feel, their balance. Uh, how do I like it personally? I think overall. Uh, if I were going to spend the $500, it would be tough, but I would probably personally go with the Hellcat. I don't know if that's sort of a uh, new gun bias that I'm feeling. It's sort of new to the market and I'm excited about it, uh, just like I was with the 365. Um, really nice, easily concealable, uh, good feeling, durable feeling firearm. Now it's always gonna come down to, of course, uh, experiences on the range. We all know that the 365 did have some growing pains out of the gate with firing pin drag, and that is something that some people still kind of complain about. So far, I have not heard much about the Hellcat, but then again, it is not in widespread circulation. And I know I get the, the gripes on these videos all the time. You know, these videos are worthless unless you shoot them. To an extent, there is some truth to that, but again, I am more looking at the spec tabletop comparisons of the two, anticipating that if there are issues with the Hellcat, just like the 365, they will most likely be worked out. Out. So it's a matter of, again, preference in that sort of regard. And I always uh, recommend to people, whether you are a viewer or a customer in my store, always take them out and shoot them before you make your final decision. That's kind of like buying a car without test driving it. But at least these videos give you a good preliminary basis for what might work for you in terms of size and cost and that sort of thing, which is the purpose of these videos. Anyway, guys, I will leave you with that. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. If you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification so you are aware when I am posting new videos. Anyway, guys, again, I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV, and I will see you next time.